Before I get into today's episode on Laramie Tunsil, I just want to let you guys know today's episode is sponsored by SeatGeek. Of course, SeatGeek is the best place to get tickets to concerts, comedy events, and of course, sporting events, which of course, a lot of you guys probably like. And if you use the promo code JKS on your first time using SeatGeek, you'll save $20. Just like that, $20 off your first purchase by using the promo code JKS. If it's something you're interested in, the link is in the description below. And anyways, back to your regularly scheduled video. Okay, so before I get into this video, there's just a little behind the scenes news going on. So I'm actually in Tampa right now. I live in Orlando, but I'm currently in Tampa just visiting with my family. I figured this to be a good way to you know spend some time with my family right before the season starts so then once the season starts then I can just simply focus on making videos it made a lot of sense to me and so of course when I'm up here then craziness breaks out and there's several pretty crazy trades going on one of which was the Laramie Tunsil trade there's also Clowney and McCoy changing teams so I'll make videos on those guys too it might come out a little bit late but I will make those videos so yeah if you're wondering why I haven't uploaded as much these past few days or why I have been a little bit slow in trying to get these videos out well, that's kind of why, because I've sort of been on vacation, visiting family, and then all of a sudden, all this craziness happens. But anyways, yeah, I mean, Tunsil getting traded to the Texans is definitely a wild move, but even more wild is how much the Houston Texans gave up to get him. The Texans required Tunsil, and also Kenny Stills, a solid receiver. And they also got a 4th and 6th round pick. In exchange, they're giving up two first rounders, a second rounder, a tackle, and a special teamer. So definitely a pretty heavy price to pay for a pretty good player. I mean, my gut reaction is that's kind of a lot for a guy who hasn't necessarily been elite. He's been very good, but not really quite elite. But at the same time, the Texans feel as though they're in the middle of a Super Bowl window right now. I mean, Deshaun Watson's on a rookie contract, and now the Colts are relatively out of the picture, so they should be favorites to win that division. At least, that's the way they feel. So maybe giving up a little bit extra for a huge position of need isn't the end of the world for them. I do like the move from the Dolphins' perspective, just simply because they're rebuilding, and it seems like they don't have too much confidence in the two quarterbacks they have, even though I like Rosen and Fitzpatrick, honestly. But they just appear to be rebuilding, and if you are rebuilding, then trade away some of your good players and get some value back. It makes sense. It's something we're seeing teams do more and more, so I do understand it from the Dolphins' perspective. But anyways, let's just talk about Tunsil, and we'll start things off with this play. One of the things that I like about Tunsil will be explained on this play, because if you take a look once this ball is snapped, notice how his hands are pretty much low down right here. I mean, they're almost on his knees at this point. He's not moving his hands in any direction. So now, some of you might be thinking, well, wait a second, don't you want to move your hands? Don't you want to try to get your hands in as good of hand placement as possible and while yes you do that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do it as soon as the ball is snapped you can wait a little bit if you have a good reaction time like Tunsil does it's kind of similar to like a boxer that's a good counter puncher in a way where you kind of just let your opponent make the first move and then you react to it because watch how he'll quickly be able to get his hand placement exactly where he wants it once he sees what his opposing defender is doing I mean, as of right now I mean that's just very quick and a very good job by him so with that, it's pretty much a bad situation for Tennessee at this point because you just, you don't have good hand placement. That Tennessee Titan has his hands to the inside of Tunsil, which basically means that he has no chance of getting around Tunsil. The only hope he can really have at this point is to try to get through him. But since Tunsil is strong, he's simply just going to push him out of the way, and that gives plenty of time for his quarterback to make a throw. Football is a game of one-on-one -on -one matchups, and having a guy like Tunsil who can win his one-on-one -on -one matchups definitely can be key. I mean, there's not a lot of tackles who can consistently win their one-on-one -on -one matchup, and Tunsil is one of the guys who can consistently win his one-on-one -on -one matchup, and him being so young, it does make sense that the Texans would want him. Part of me wonders if this is kind of the Khalil Mack effect, where the Bears trade for Khalil Mack and then make the playoffs the next year. I wonder if more teams are going to be willing to part ways with several first-round picks to try to get a very talented player. I mean, we also saw the Browns do it to pick up Odell. They gave up one first-round pick, but also a very good player in Jabril Peppers. But anyways, let's move on to this play. This is another play I liked from Tunsil, and this is kind of a smart play by him. So right at the bat on this play, there's five Titans who are on the line, so those are kind of the five guys that the offensive line has to be aware of. That's the whole point of a 3-4, is it kind of can fool your opposing offensive line. It makes things difficult, because you don't know exactly which guy is going to be rushing the passer. And on this play, right off the bat, those three Titans will be rushing the passer, which is what you would expect the three guys in the middle. Now, typically, one of the edge rushers would also be rushing the passer. However, that is not what's going to be happening on this play. Instead, it will be that Titan who's going to be rushing the passer. So this not means that there's going to be four players rushing the passer, but all of them are lined up inside of the tackle. So that's where Tunsil is, and his focus does have to be on the edge rusher right over there, where if that guy were to rush the passer, Tunsil would be the only guy who could potentially block him, so of course he has to focus on him. But since he won't be rushing the passer, this could be actually a tricky situation for Tunsil. However, look at how quickly Tunsil is going to realize that he doesn't have to worry about that guy. He kind of realizes right off the bat, okay, don't have to worry about that Titan, I'll just simply look over to the middle of the field because that's where this play is going now. And from that point, he's able to deliver a big hit, knocks the guy over, and again, 
gives his quarterback plenty of time to make a throw. It's plays like that that I like, you know, keeping your head up, keeping aware of who's coming in your direction and who's not coming in your direction. It's a lot easier said than done. And also, he just delivered a big hit at the end of that play to knock a guy over, so you gotta love that as well. And it's not just a passing game where he can be effective either. Like, take a look at this one. He's gonna be going up one-on-one -on -one against that Tennessee Titan right over there. So, of course, a one-on-one -on -one matchup in a running game is a big situation. If you lose this matchup, it can completely disrupt his play and turn what could have been a 10-yard gain into a loss of two if you lose your one-on-one -on -one matchup on a running play. But one thing I like about Tunsil but don't love about Tunsil is he does attack this Titan, but notice how he does it a little bit slowly. I know this seems like an insane nitpick because he does have good hand placement but would have liked to see him have a little bit more quickness there. Against most edge rushers it won't mean too much but against the Von Miller he could potentially just knock your hands away and get around you. And of course Tunso isn't going up against Von Miller right now so maybe he would have done something like that if he were going up against an elite level edge rusher. But you are kind of leaving yourself open if you go a little bit slower there. Again he wanted to get good hand placement, so it's it's a total nitpick but I'm just kind of saying this is why I wouldn't say he's an elite tackle although he is a very good one. Like, this is what makes Ryan Ramsek Ryan Ramsek, or Andrew Whitworth Andrew Whitworth. You got guys like Bakiari and Tyron Smith who are a lot more aggressive and a lot more quick at getting that hand placement perfect. It just took him an extra second. Granted, those guys are also all a lot older than Hunsel. I'm totally nitpicking here, and I totally get it, but I'm just... These are things that I noticed. That's what separates him from an elite level talent. That's why I think he's just a very good level talent as of today. Anyways, I don't want to harp on that too much because it, as you see, he actually got the hand placement well. And because he is so strong, now it's going to be an easy win for him. And since they're double teaming the other Titan on the other side of the screen, this now makes for an easy run up the middle. So that was a very good play. I mean, I, I showed that play to show a very good play. It was a good example of Tunsil. And I also should be clear that he will, on occasion, go very quickly and try to make a good block. Like on this one, he's going up one-on-one -on -one against an edge rusher, but this time he's going to do a much better job of getting those hands there as quickly as possible. You know, in a running game, you want to attack, and look at how he does attack and push that bill basically over to the left side of the screen. And once again, because there is going to be a double team over to the middle of the screen, this now makes for, yet again, another very easy run. So that's kind of what he brings to the table in the running game. I mean, he legitimately is at times an elite blocker I mean at times you look at him and you're like man this guy is elite I think he needs to work on the consistency a little bit before I would actually call him elite but he's still very good and very young I know everyone's gonna harp on how much they gave up to get him but I mean again everyone said that with the Bears last year and the Bears turned out pretty good and I also think it's worth mentioning you can like a trade from both sides you can think it makes sense for both teams I think the Khalil Mack trade was a perfect example of that I think the Raiders got some value so that way they could rebuild and try to get better for 2019 and the Bears were able to just be good right now, so I thought that made a lot of sense for both parties. Now, the reason I think this might not make as much sense for the Texans is simply just because I don't think Tunsil is as good as Mac, and I think they gave up more to get Tunsil than the Bears gave up to get Mac. So that's kind of why I would say I'm not sure if I love it, but I do kind of like it, and you know, I do always beat the drum of, listen, you have to go all in at some point. You have to try to find a way to win a championship. The goal in sports is not to be good for five years and then be bad. The goal in sports is to be really good for one year and win a championship. Now, in fairness, there was also the clowny situation, which I didn't like as much, but that's a video for another day. One more play I thought was interesting was this one, where he's going to be going up one-on-one -on -one against that Jacksonville edge rusher right there, and once again, he is going to attack here. He's doing what you would expect him to do on his running play. He is attacking that Jaguars defender. He has his left arm kind of underneath that Jacksonville Jaguars right arm, which is definitely a good situation for Tunzel. But the interesting thing here is this is actually not a running play. This is a passing play. It's going to be play action. So now it's kind of an interesting hand placement for Tunzel. He essentially started off as though he's run blocking, even though he will actually be pass blocking. But it actually kind of makes some sense. I mean, if you are a defender and you see an opposing tackle is trying to run block, well, then typically you'll try to say, okay, I'm just not going to get moved to make things easier for my linebackers to come in and make a tackle. But because he started off doing that, and then it is going to be play action, now Tunsil is in great shape. He's able to win his one-on-one -on -one matchup. The Jaguar does get free a little bit behind him, but he's still able to stay with him and push him behind his quarterback, and that's what leads to a first down. That really helped him get the first down on that one. Personally, when watching tape, I was very impressed on several plays. However, I also gotta be honest, and I gotta be fair, this is not a perfect player. He is a young player who I think is getting better, but he definitely still has some room for improvement, and this play will be an example of that. So he's once again left tackle, and what would you expect your left tackle and left guard to do in this play? Well, you'd probably just expect them to go out and block those two Jaguars who are in the area. Seems pretty simple. But for Jacksonville, they're going to mix things up a little bit. They're going to pull over each of those two Jacksonville Jaguars to basically just try to fool that opposing offensive line. Try to fool Miami on this one. And it's actually going to work out pretty well. I mean, if you look at Tunsil on this play, he kind of gets beat. He realizes too late what's going on. He doesn't get the perfect hand placement that he wants. And he is going to get beat and it leads to not a sack, but it leads to a play disruption. 
that's going to happen in pretty much every tackle in the league, but it is something that you would like to see a tackle that you traded two first round picks for to not make those types of mistakes. And it's not like this guy is getting beat like consistently or anything like that. I mean, he only allowed two sacks last year, so he's not that bad at all. He's very good. But I'm just showing some of his bad plays just to let you guys know, okay, this guy is not perfect. He is going to get beat. And also to bring things full circle, I'll talk about something that kind of happened similar to that first play I showed you. Where that's where he is on a screen, he's going up one-on-one -on -one against an edge rusher, and once again, he is going to wait to try to get as good of hand placement as possible. So okay, we've seen that he can be good at that. However, this time, he's just going to miss. I mean, if you look, his left arm is kind of like on that guy's helmet, basically. It's not good hand placement at all. This is going to cause him to get pushed back into his quarterback, who still throws a touchdown, which just kind of shows that, hey, you can only control so much as a tackle. Sometimes, even on your bad plays, it'll result in touchdowns. But that was a bad play, in my opinion, and something that he will have to work on in the future to a degree. But even with that, I still think Tunsil is a very good player, and we have seen teams take huge jumps when adding a tackle. Most notably, Andrew Whitworth going to the Rams, and then the Rams going from one of the worst offenses in the league to one of the best offenses in the league. And of course, a big part of that as well was just the Rams getting John McVay and moving on from Jeff Fisher. So it's not like it was just Andrew Whitworth and everything else stayed the same. But of course, he had a big factor in that. And this is a position of needs. So again, does this trade actually help the Texans in the long term? Well, only time will tell. But will it help him out for 2019? Absolutely.